Welcome to Travel Painting Without Leaving Home. Today I'm going to show you how to complete the painting of Provence. Uh, I've got a drawing down sketched and inked and we're going to start bit by bit. We're going to start with the sky first. We're, I generally work big to small, no details to little details at the very end. So how I'm going to start this sky is to take clean water and paint it on just the sky area. So I'm just going to brush it back and forth, get it on there, make it pretty good and wet. And today I have a book that I'm leaning my painting board up against so that my painting can, my paint can work with gravity and roll down. So I've got this on like this. Then I've got a big puddle of blue paint. So I'm going to dip into my blue paint and just start slapping it on and let it mush down, let it go down, get it on there, get it on. It doesn't have to be neat, doesn't have to be perfect, just get it on. If it starts to roll into the house, then dab it off, but I'm getting it in like that, so I've got it in. Maybe I'm going to drop a little bit more up in the top. Maybe I'll wait. So then quickly I want to take some clouds out. So you'll notice I am using rolled up paper towels. Usually I to dab out some clouds. I just roll them on, press them down, lift up, and there's your cloud. Usually I use artist tissue, tissue which is really toilet paper, but since it's in demand now and we don't have a lot of it and don't want to run out, I'm switching to paper towels for taking out clouds. So I'm dabbing out some clouds. Maybe I'll have some littler ones down here. And while it's still wet, I'm going to take a mixture of the blue I used in my sky and a teeny bit of permanent rose and go on the bottom of my clouds and sort of form little scallops like clouds. If you look at them, they have little gray areas on the bottom. So I'm just doing that, and then I'm going to clean off my brush, turn my painting upside down, and soften the bottom edge of the clouds, that purple edge. I'm just going to soften it, and then I might even dab a little bit more. And I might even add a little bit more purple for emphasis, but I'm going to dab. Again, you could switch your tissue now if you wanted to, if you wanted a clean piece, but mine seems to be clean enough. And I might add a little bit more purple, a little bit more blue, just so they look like the bottoms of clouds. And around by the horizon, I think I'm going to turn my paper upside down, put a little reddish violet right behind the house just for interest and I'm tilting my paper up so that I'm not um, so it does so I don't get a big blossom or a big blotch of paint if I, it would that would happen if it the, the um, piece of board were laying flat now I'm gonna let that dry leave that alone not mess with it and I've already mixed up a huge puddle of yellow green paint and I am going to slop that on. I'm painting on dry paint this time because I have a little bit more control because I have to go around the clothing and it doesn't have to be perfect because I can always dab off the paint if I get it in the wrong place. And so here I stop, I reload. I can leave some holes for flowers or, and then I'm tilting it and I'm adding another mixture, another brush full of paint, right to the edge. I might leave some spaces for flowers. And then in the very front, I'm going to leave a lot of spaces for flowers like that. If I wanted to, too, I could drop in a little more color in the front to make it yellower over here while it's still wet. And then I'm going to take a little bit of darker green while it's still wet and start back here. 
and put a little bit of darker green and let it mush in while it's wet to the grass. And as it gets toward the front of my grassy area, it's going to get lighter, and that's atmospheric perspective at work. That's a device we use um, in painting to make brighter things look like they're in the front and duller things look like they're not. Now I'm going to dab my shirts where they're dirty, where they're covered with paint, and I'm going to switch to the other side and do the same thing. So while my wash is still wet for the front lawn, I added a little bit darker green right here, and I am going to add the shadows. I'm going to use my cobalt blue for the shadow under the tree while it's wet, and I'm just going to dab it on kind of loosely, leaving some maybe some sky holes underneath it. Maybe I'll put some more on. More on. Did you hear that? More. Ha. Huh. Okay. Then I think I'll also put a little bit of a shadow with cobalt blue underneath the clothesline because the sun's kind of coming from the back like that. And it'll dry. Maybe I'll add a little bit more here. Variation. And I'll leave that to dry. Now I have to go somewhere to paint my next area that is not touching my wet area. So probably the best bet is to paint the house. So I've already mixed up some yellow ochre and I've got some throw in a little bit of permanent rose on this side. So I have permanent rose and yellow ochre. And then on this side I think I'll get a little lemon yellow so it'll be a little lighter. Now I'm going to start the house with the lightest because the sun's coming from here. I'm going to start like this. Start over here, like this. It's still, while it's still wet, I'm going to switch to my second wish of color and put it on and let it meet, the paint will meet and kind of mush into each other and blend spontaneously. Then over here, I'm going to go and put a little more pink in just so I have variation. I could paint it all one color, it doesn't really matter. Um, could drop in some here, but now I've got that done. If I did go over some of my windows, I could dab it out. If I wanted more texture on my building, I could also dab it, so it might look like an old building, like that with dabbing. Now I took some of my color out, so I think I might put a little more back in. So I'm going to let that dry and see how that looks. Now I have to find another area uh, that is not touching. So, I think I'll go to the, the, well, I think I'll turn off the camera and go pet Pace. Hi, Pacey. It's time for a break and petting time. Be a good boy. Yes. Okay. Come here. Nice good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Pet Zuko. Pet Zuko. Okay, everybody's happy. Break time's over. So, after you take a break, and if you want to check if your washes are, or your paint is dry, you can just put your finger on it and feel. And if it feels cool or wet, then you still don't want to paint your, a wash if you don't want it to mix. So, mine's okay. It's, it's pretty dry. So, I think what I'm going to do next is put in some mountains. So I've made a mixture of burnt sienna and ultramarine blue. So I am going to paint that on dry and I'm going to use my the tip of the brush to form the little ins and outs and shapes of my tree. So it has an interesting edge. And then I'm going to put the put it like that and get it on. It since it is a mountain, you kind of want texture in it. So you could drop in some blue, you could drop in some more uh, burnt sienna. That might be too much, but we'll see. We'll see. It dries lighter. You could also 
mush it together and homogenize it with your brush. Then you're going to come over here, add that over here. You want to be careful. You, you want to use the tip of your brush now, not the belly. And you want to put that in there. Getting in the little areas. You could still add a little blue, maybe. And then over here, and I move my painting around to get to the areas I'm painting. Because I think that's easier for me. And I go over here. I might get mix up a little. Okay, so you should always mix up more paint than you think you're going to need because then you, do, if you do, then you don't risk running out and having to, the color change while you're, if it may not match your second color. So that is okay. This isn't doesn't this is for fun. This is for distraction. We this does not have to be the Sistine Chapel or a perfect painting. So that's called wet into wet, where I the wash is already wet and I drop down paint into the wet wash. So I've got that. While well, I've got the brown on my brush, I think I'll go over here to use it on the tree trunk. So I will keep in mind the sun's coming from this direction, so I'm going to make the darker part over on the opposite edge of the tree. And I'm going to do that. This is narrow, so I don't know if my brush is going to be able to do it. I may have to switch to a smaller brush. Um, but I've got it on, the basic thing. Then I can drop in a little more on the darker side and leave it white. And then I think I have to decide where else I'm going to paint right now. I think since this is dry, I'll start putting in some flowers in the foreground. So what I'm going to do is make them a mixture of pink and a red orange. Red orange is Scarlet Lake and the pink is Permanent Rose. So I'm just going to use my brush and dot them in. Bigger dots in the front. I'm kind of pretending that they are um, poppies, red poppies, like they have in Provence, which would be appropriate. And I'm randomly putting them on. I don't really care where they go as long as they're bigger in the front and brighter and then they're smaller as they recede. So I'm putting a few in. Um, you could have them in shapes or just blobs. You can always dab them if you're not happy with them. Um, but just keep in mind you want different sizes and you want them to get smaller as they go back. So you could do that. You don't want them too bright in the back. You can always do more later, but you want to just get the feel and see how it's going to work out. I think I'm going to put some over here. You want you could use them also to re lead the viewer's eye around. You could make a big old one here, and make it maybe make a very pinky pink one over here, and then maybe put a pinky one over here. Then what you're going to do is add the green that goes with them, the stems. Um, so I'm going to switch to a rigger brush, which is a long brush, and it makes really good grass lines and hair lines and thin lines. And I'm going to use a different green, a more Kelly green, but I'm going to mix in a little bit of my sap green and a little bit of my blue, too, so I get a, um, matte, a green that has harmony. Then I'm just going to lay these down, lay down some green, oops, that came out red, interesting. Okay, let's try again. Okay, so that's, that came about because it's not dry. So maybe I'm going to wait to put the stems on until they're dry. I didn't, but that also could be called a happy accident. So see <laughs> what nice sticks these make, which nice. So you got littler grasses here. As you go back, that's atmospheric perspective, two little dots of grass. Then you can have big ones in the foreground. Very nice. Thank you, cameraman. Cam I mean, camera dude. He's told me he wants to be referred to as camera dude. So we're going to call him camera dude. Okay, camera dude. I appreciate you two delaying dinner and filming this for me. So... Here we go, we got those green things. Should I attempt another one there? 
Yeah, if you pull them down, they're going to be red stems. But that's okay. We can fix it later, or we could just leave it. What the heck? Let's put some little stems here, little bitty grasses here. You could even have them be dots, or you could have little dots. There'd be a little bit of grass around your um, laundry line here. So I think that's good for now. I might take this green, and I might use it back here, maybe. I might put in a little bit of a, maybe I'll put a little pink in with it just to make it an interesting green. And I might use it down here just to have contrast underneath my tree. Okay, so so might do that. I don't know if I like that. So I might drop in some more green on top of it to make it look a little greener. And so then I've got my bushes back here. Kind of interesting, so so, whatever. I've got, I like it better all green, but that's okay. That's how you learn. Got to try different things. So I might, so I might just dab out that red because I wasn't crazy about it and add more green, brighter green there. Ha. So that could be good. Okay. Oops, and I don't forget over here we've got some. Put in a little bit more. Okay. Now you want to do the roof. So remember that brown and that green that you mixed up a while ago? You want to put that, I mean the brown and the blue. You want to put more blue, less brown. And we're going to start from this side with the tip of the brush. And we're just going to brush in that blue. And I could even leave some line kind of do it in a line way like that so it looks kind of interesting there's some white showing you could put it here you can even put more blue in while it's it's there just to have more interest and then it also kind of will contrast with the ooh, like that contrast with the sky and the chimney ooh, don't get too crazy ooh. Okay. Oh, we could maybe try that with, go back and get a little more brown, mix it with a little more brown and try that on the dark side of our tree. Over here, we're almost done. Huh. So, we could have that. Um, could have it a little bit deeper. I mean, you want maybe to make some lines here. Okay. Now, this is the thing we've been waiting for, our tree. How are we going to paint that tree? Well, for one, I'm going to wait till the mountain's absolutely dark. But this tree back here, I am going to take some of my lavender from that mix from Permanent Rose and the um, cobalt that I had and make kind of a lavender because those are the kind of trees that are in bloom now. Um, and so I just want to put that in. So I'm just going to blob and dot this. So I'm going to go... Put some dots, put the darker dots over here, put a few dots in the tree, put it like that. And then I think what I'm going to do is put more water and just kind of put the water right next to the purple I already have there and let it bleed over there. I kind of like that. It works. Leave some white if you want. I could even drop in a teeny bit more purple now that it's dark because it'll dry much lighter. And it's going to be dry over here. And it's going to be darker. If you wanted to, you could even make one of your windows purple like it's reflecting. So you want to just put one swipe of purple there. Maybe if you want to be wild and crazy, you could put another swipe there. Okay, then while you've still got that on their brush, maybe you want a few little purple... Work that purple in so it's not just randomly your eye. It's not just randomly on that tree. There might be a couple flowers here. Put a few here. It's up to you. But then it would be make more sense. Okay, now let's see. Is this dry? I think it's dry enough. Let's mix up something for our tree color. It has to be a different color than our lawn color. So I'm going to take the existing color I used for the lawn. But I'm going to doctor it up. I'm going to put a lot of sap green in. 
And I think maybe I'll put in some ultramarine blue. Ooh, that's kind of pretty. And then for my first pass on the tree, I think I'll have a lot of water in it because that would be lighter. And maybe I'll even start with some yellow because that'll bleed in. So because this is the bright side, so I'm going to start with yellow green a little bit just at the top. Yeah. Then I'm going to put it into my green right next to it and let them bleed together. And I'm kind of just dotting it, but some of the dots are close together, so they become blobs. So I'm just, see, I'm just sort of dotting it on. Just get it started. It's going to dry much lighter. You can use the tip of your brush to form the edges of your tree, like so. Doesn't No lollipop trees are allowed. I can tilt it so that it's going to mix uh, and go this way. And then over here, maybe I want it darker over here. I maybe want it darker down here. And generally, I want the bottoms of each tree kind of cluster to be darker, but not even. And I can drop some in while it's wet also. And then I can also turn this upside down and pull some paint out of these mixtures to get a lighter mixture. You can put a little pressure on your brush to, to spread it out like that. Um, if you decide it's too light, then let's go back into our mixture and where you want your darks, just drop them in. It's getting a little bit wet, and so you can't, you have to use a little bit stickier paint. And there you go. Wow, see how dark that is? And you're probably freaking out. But don't, because it's going to dry much, much lighter. So I'm going to put that here, so there'll be a real variation between my lawn green and the green of my tree. So then I'm going to put a little bit more water, turn it upside down, attach this right next to it. I'm dotting it, I'm blobbing it, bringing it over here. As it goes over here, maybe I'm going to put a teeny bit more yellow in here just for fun. But we don't want it to match the lawn because that wouldn't be good. So if it matches too much, we'll have to change it. Okay, so now I'm turning it around. And I'm going to put some more blue in this mixture. And just make sure it doesn't match the lawn. If you get a big piece of blue stuck on your brush, just either dab it out or pull, try to pull it out with your, with your brush tip. Okay, that's okay. Maybe I'll come back and put just a lot of yellow green on top just because to, it won't blend in here because sometimes trees are like that. Okay, you can even if you're wild and crazy put a drop out here that's not attached to the tree. So you can put some over here. Then I'm going to let it dry. Oop, that's a little dark that's sticking out there. Oop, and I got to attach that. Okay, so I'm going to feed the cameraman dinner and then come back and finish this. Yay. So, we've pretty much got this finished except for the details and the little areas. So, what you want to do is look at your painting from a distance, if you can, and decide what you need to do. So, I'm taking a smaller brush, and it's a little bit of a, of a square brush, and I'm going to put in my chimney. I think I'm going to put this on both sides of the chimney and then make the far side darker later. Okay, I did that. So I might use that. I could use that for some of my flowers. I could use it. Because if you just use that color one place, your eye will go right there. So you have to um, use it a few different places. Maybe I'm going to mix that with a little more yellow and make a yellow-orange flower here, like a poppy, even though it really doesn't exist in Provence because we know they only have yellow-orange poppies in California, but don't tell anybody. It's artist license. We can put a few there. Now let's bring this color over here, make this little dress orange. So I'm going to put that there. Okay, 
Then we've got to have Provence blue doors. So I'll use a kind of grayish blue and I'll make some shutters and some the doors. I like to do the door darker at top at the top kind of at an angle and like that so it looks like more depth than the I'm gonna just do one stroke and they don't have to be perfect because this is an old building so maybe I'm gonna do this one I'm gonna do it just kind of slightly this one I'm gonna do another door doesn't have to be perfect. I think I'm going to switch to a darker blue for some of the windows. Maybe use ultramarine blue. I'll put all the colors I use in the link beneath this video. So just hurry up and do this. Yeah, there's a nice blue window. Here's another blue window. Here's a blue window. Here's a blue window. Oh, let's make this one blue against the tree. I don't know what, oh yeah, I have to make this one blue because there'll be contrast. Maybe I'll make it a little darker. And then, you, while you've got this blue on your brush, you want to mix it with your burnt sienna and get a dark blue with not too much water. You might have to dab it. And this line, the front of your um, roof, try to be really steady, as steady as you can, and balance your... Uh, hand on the edge of the board if you have to and just get that dark in there that once you get that dark in it sort of pops everything else so we got that okay you could even take a little of that if you wanted to and put just a teeny bit in the tree just for just to make it have more form okay then we are going to do the rest of the laundry so let's get this Big dress, be pink. Why not? It's going to have some stripes, I think. But first I'm going to do it pink and put the stripes later. Leave a little white. I always try to leave more white than I think I should. I think I'm going to have a purple dress. Or purple shorts are nice. Always nice. Because I've used the purple. Okay, so I've got most of my details in. I'm just going to turn off the camera and then I'll put the rest of the details in and show you the end and put all the details um, in the information below this video. I put in the details um, and I wanted to explain to you what I did. I, put, I painted all the windows different colors. I painted the far side away from the sun a darker version of the red orange. I put a little blue in to make it darker. I put a little more dark blue in the trees to make them appear more rounded. I painted all of the clothing. Um, then I came to the front here and I gave more details to my flowers and I decided that they needed some little round dots that sort of are leaves or something. They give the effect of leaves. So I put a lot of dots and round things, bigger ones in the front again, and they get smaller as they go back. I made the shadow a little more precise under the clothing. I made a shadow for this tree. I think I put a little more detailed foliage here. I took my rigger brush and I made tree branches going through and sky holes. In this case, you don't, you're not seeing the sky, you're seeing the back of the mountain. And then I added a teeny bit of colored pencil just to sort of give some texture to my mountains. I think that was it. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and you were able to create a painting. Um, if you have any questions, just uh, email me or write them in the comments below. I'd love to hear your comments and I'd love to know what you want about future videos. Um, Next week. What are you doing oh, next, next week, week, teacher, <laughs> professor? <laughs> next week, we are going to do a video of another part of France. I think we'll do the Normandy area, um, the Bonnard's house. So uh, stay tuned. I'll post it as soon.
as soon as I can. And please leave your comments. And thank you so much for watching. And stay well, everybody. Stay well and stay out of trouble and in the house and safe. And that's it.